Sure. So respiratory therapists, we are cardiopulmonary specialists. So we take care of the heart and lungs and we take care of any type of ventilation that a patient may need. So we can deliver um, aerosol treatments to patients. We can put them on CPAP, like if you're familiar with a lot of people who wear CPAP at night for obstructive sleep apnea. So we can run those machines. We put any type of oxygen on patients. And in many facilities, we put the breathing tube into the patient and hook them up to this ventilator. And the ventilator doesn't just deliver oxygen, but it also delivers um, tidal volume, which like uh, how much volume you have in your lungs and it delivers the breaths. So basically it breathes for the patient so the patient can rest um, to get over whatever disease they have. So since I've been out of the field a little bit, I mean, I'm still teaching, so I know what respiratory is, but I haven't been at the bedside and there's a few things that have changed in the, you know, so I'm, I'm relearning all my uh, ventilators and hospital policies. As soon as you walk in, you're getting your temperature taken, you're getting your little sticker on your badge, and then you get a mask, and you wear a mask the whole time you're there. The patient population I'm used to is smaller. I'm used to working in pediatrics in the neonatal intensive care unit, so how I would ventilate a baby is a little bit different than how I ventilate an adult. So that's what I'm looking at now is how to, to take the knowledge that I have and put it into bigger people. So I'm really, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a really good experience. Since they're not seeing a whole lot of patients right now, it's like the calm. It's like you can feel it. It's like something's rolling in. You can feel something's going to happen. Something's coming, but it hasn't quite gotten to the door yet. So there's this sense of we need to be ready. We need to be ready. And then there's the sense of, um, but I'm tired of being ready. I just want to get this over with kind of a thing. The, the big concern for what they need at the hospital right now is making sure they don't run out of stuff. Every single day they're counting and making sure that they have enough supplies. And right now they do, but I think they're still that foreboding sense of something coming um, might impact that need. Several therapists who have just recently retired or who are in education like myself, or they do uh, consulting. And I have colleagues in Michigan who have stepped up in North Carolina and in Seattle where my my home base really is. They've reached out to me a lot in New York City, you know, begging. They're even like, we, we'll waive the orientation. Just come in and we'll get you right in. But, you know, as a single mom, I need to stay close. <laughs> so for my son, who is at home now doing all his, his schooling online through FM, he's doing a great job. And they've done a great job reaching out to him. Except that they're, they're uh, I noticed when he's doing his classes and I'm doing, trying to be on, as well, the internet just keeps crashing. I think that's been a big, it's been a big toll for us. So he actually cleared out an area in the garage. So when I come home, I'll go in the garage and just take my stuff off there, you know, the scrubs and leave the shoes outside so that I can just grab a robe and run upstairs and shower and not have to see anybody, you know, um, in that time until I'm clean and then I can come down and and see him. So he's concerned. I can see it in his eyes. The days that I need to go to work, he does a lot more around the house. He, I think he's taken on, I'm, you know, I'm an adult, just about an adult now, and I need to step up and, and help mama take off some of this, this burden that she seems to have um, at Upstate. So the senior students, I had a Zoom meeting with them this morning. They're getting ready for their graduation. They'll have virtual commencement, and they're a little disappointed, but, you know, they'll get over it. It's the junior students who want to get out there and volunteer. And I'm getting so much pushback from allowing students to be in the hospital. Because these are people who go to respiratory school because they want to be respiratory therapists. You know, they want to help. They want to be in the hospital. So, so I think that's been, a, that's been a really big struggle this week.